Right, hello guys, it's DDK again, and uh, <laughs> um, right, we have a uh, Quake World 4 and 4 match, and I wanted to do an analysis, but it was it's going to be like a POV analysis, and it's going to be my POV from, I think, I think yeah, this is a game I've already uploaded, I think it was one of the first games I uploaded, it's a match between... TKS and 666, the mixed team of Darky, Kingpin, Laxap and Milton, and uh, TKS being me and Carl Gannon and Moltas. And I wanted to show, um, I wanted to show that the decision making process in like every decision that I make, which is really doable in Quake World, because in Quake World, um, a lot of stuff in Quake World is pretty quantifiable, so it should be pretty easy for me to explain everything that I choose to do and why. And yeah, so let's just go. Let's let's do this. Let's do it. Do it. Okay. Countdown has begun. Oh, um, one thing uh, I'm going to mention quickly is you'll notice at the bottom left I've put the console output for the the chat and you, you uh, when the game started you'll see team chat there and the team binds if you're not a quake or player are very important but we'll get into that as we actually are actually playing so here I spawn first RL and first RL is one of the most important spawns um, on this map and it has a huge responsibility attached to it so by now I should have used team binds and it's a shame that we don't get the team communication of the voice as well but my idea is, or rather my goal is to use my team communication to get all the information, glean all the information I can off my team, the relevant information, and use, you know, use the binds and stuff to see who has what. So I know from the binds and whether it was, it was called, usually we have a priority of what we call at the start of the game in TKS. And uh, we always say, you know, I spawned Pen, I spawned RL, because those are two really important things. Um, and the quad is usually the lesser known one because um, we don't it's uh, you don't know who's going to get it off of the spawns so as i uh, i may or may not know i should know that it's enemy quad and so i'm looking up here and i and i should wait here yeah i'm waiting there a little bit because if i see the quad glow through the wall i'll spam rockets and I want to try and stay here for as long as possible because I want this yellow because that will make it so that I'm as safe as possible if I get this yellow. But this is also a really dangerous position as you see the quad boomstick can do a huge amount of damage to me with, with no armor. So he can actually f push me out of the area and here we go, he comes back. I managed to kill him but I'm pretty weak. So I decide to go out the window and try and take a safer route away from the flooders. But they may very well have my position and there we go, Kingpin had my position and he's trying to get me... Uh, uh, so he uh, he is trying to flood me. So it depends on his team how c convicted they want to be on trying to kill me and stopping me from getting into red armor. So I ended up boring a pack there on that spawner, and that's pretty bad. Um, boring can, is fine as long as you can be safely assured that a teammate's going to get the pack. Now boring in a place like red armor is questionable so I don't know whether I was very aware that I had support because we could see that there, that there was a teammate to uh, pick up um, any packs or whatever although Kingpin actually ended up getting it but basically unless you can guarantee your packs going to be picked up you do not want to drop it as a, as a rocket launcher in red armor super easy for him to get position and the red as well and then that's a really dangerous position for your team so off this spawn, I'm just going to apply pressure on this red armor because I don't want this enemy boom sticker to get it. And I knew it was soon, and I managed to get that one for Ganon. So now, so so my first my first job was to make sure that RA was okay, and to give information to my team quad about RA. He came and dealt with it, and now what I have to do is pressure the weapons, and I'm going to do that in this spawn by going to yellow first. Yellow isn't up. I know. Now this is another. This is actually a good um, decision. 
if you know that like like I have 65 health, if I try and get to the rocket launcher box, I'm probably just gonna die. By the time I get there, I might be on one HP or something. I'm gonna lose health along the way. So standing at the top of the bridge here really gives me position to do damage, and I and it also gives me some position on the yellow. I decide not to, uh, to jump down to try and get more damage onto Darky, but again now I'm alive. Now I'm alive in the water, and I gave the information that enemy RL to a yellow. So my team knows that now, Ganon knows that now. And uh, we can see that Ganon is at, if we look at the team overlay, um, Ganon's at the at the um, yellow upper. So he'll be able to catch that guy. And I'm here at the uh, the LG, and I saw when it was taken. I didn't get it, but I saw when it was taken. So my team has that item time now. And uh, we can see that Ganon killed Darky. We can see even Darky's rocket hitting the ceiling. I'm not taking damage. There's a pack there now, so let's go back to my pov. And I die. Ganon's calling a pack at yellow upper, like must um, almost certainly. We can see from the binds that Encarl got the pack, took pack, and we can see on the team overlay as well. We don't use that as much because uh, we, the, you don't the team overlay that you see at the top right that is not allowed in EQL. It's not allowed, so we don't use that. I just use it to help. As a spectator, I should probably turn it off for this game, for this, but but whatever, it doesn't matter too much. So no one's quad ready. Ganon managed to make sure that RA is safe. Ganon's just gonna keep trying to keep that stuff safe, and I and I'm a boomsticker, so I'm I'm tasked I'm tasked with a few jobs. As a boomsticker, I firstly, I mean, if Red is safe, then I need to make sure that I can help track enemy weapons and then I and that I can get an, uh, weapon times I can get weapons if they spawn and I can pressure the areas to deter and hurt and you know kill enemies that would be trying to take those weapons that is my job as a boomsticker here I'm going to try and help red because I know that there's been I could hear and I saw you know people basically what happened was I saw someone jumping in from hill um, past me as I spawned and going up to red and so what that indicated to me was either that the enemy team was trying to flood red or that that guy was a player who was going to attack red or get into S and G and he had something because there's no reason to go through there if you don't have something so I, w I wanted to go up and help to make sure or at least provide information and and figure out what was going on there so I spawned at the rocket launcher I'm too weak we, we killed our boomsticker together and then I died so now again I hear and I know that there's shit going on at red, so I have to come back to red to help make sure that we have this for sure, for sure, for sure. And if there's any, if there's any any errant packs, I can grab one of those. I see the hill mega up, so now it's, you know again it's my job to go for these weapons and stop the enemy from getting them. Keep track of the times, keep track of where the enemy weapons go. So I'm I'm on the uh, rocket launcher here. And uh, we can see that Ganon actually lost his weapon a while ago. And I get this RL. So now, what do I want? I want armor. If red is safe, I will go uh, on the you know right to the through hill up to red. And if red is not safe, if we're unsure. I I already know that Ganon has uh, had yellow area safe, so I'm going to go there. And I know quad is soon, so I should be okay to get position. But we can see that. Um, the enemy did get the quad, quadded enemy at RA. We can see at the bottom left, quadded enemy at RA. So I know, I know, I, I know where it's safe to move. That's really important because if he's got a quad RL quad shaft, you have to know where he is. He can insta give you straight away. Otherwise, so you have to know with certainty where you can move. And if I can move out to here, which is good, I can pressure this area with my rockets. Or here, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to ambush a quad carrier. So if the quad carrier is like, okay, red is dealt with, he leaves red, he wants to go pressure the, weapon, pressure the weapons rooms from this side, I will just wait here and ambush him. Quadded enemy at YA, I see. And so now I know that I can try and move up here to try and get maybe a shot onto the quad. And there we go, I try to get a couple shots. Uh, that's two shots is all, all I'm gonna get. I missed, but that's fine. I can get into this red now using the opportunity of that mega, and using the rocket jump. The rocket jump it being important there because time counts. Time really counts. Look how close uh, Milton is. You know, there's darky around. There could be people coming from hill. There could be coming people coming from here. If I would spend time running up these steps, which would take a few seconds, I'm, I'm gonna take damage, for sure. 
if I just rocket jump up, I already got the Mega, so I'm in a decent shape. It just gets me there faster. It's a, it's a higher percentage play. It's it's going to make me safe on the red more of the time than not rocket jumping up, and I don't lose out from uh, anything from doing it. Managed to kill a rocket launcher there. Didn't save the pack, which was uh, wasn't awesome. But the reason was because quad is spawning, and I needed to get there. I have no time to wait around to save packs, so I get the quad. What is my job here now with the quad? I have to make sure that um, red is safe, and I know that red is safe because uh, we have teammates there. We, I was just there, and it's unlikely that they'll have anyone there. So I'm going to take the gamble instead of um, checking red with my own eyes. I'm going to leave my teammate to give me communication and I'm going to go through window to pressure the weapons room and the yellow and try and kill enemy weapons. So I see Lax up there with the with the rocket launcher and I need to kill him. Did a horrible job there of trying to kill him, so that's an execution failure. But it's fine, the uh, decision making is fine. And I actually end up falling down onto onto the hill and that's just an unfortunate set of circumstances. Sometimes you get blocked and sometimes you just fall down and there's not much you can do about it. I did drop a pack though so that, that was really bad and off of the spawn I'm going to pressure the weapons room again because that's the best thing I can really do to try and get my team weapons and yellows because they have the red you see so I'm going there would be suicidal at this point. So instead I'm going to try and help with my entire team because we don't have um, no one on my team has anything right now, so we just need to to barrel down the weapons area. Although Pennant is spawning now, so that's our chance to get in this. And we can see, oh, I managed to just about steal it there. And uh, that's a great situation for us. So, as we had nothing, I mean, we're all going to be jumping on that pen. I mean, we should all be jumping on it anyway, but there we got lucky enough to get it. So right now I just need a weapon. I managed to get a shot with 100 cells, so that's really lucky. Um, what should I be doing in this situation? Well, I don't know if I know when the RL is because our, our RL times are something we call over voice, so I can't say with certainty whether I know if it will spawn or not. If I don't know with certainty whether it's going to spawn or not, then waiting around here for five seconds or so is is quite good because I have, like, um, I got the pen, and by the time I've moved to around here I, and getting the LG, I've already used about 10 seconds of the pen probably. So I've got 20 seconds of the pen or so, so another 5 seconds is fine, which will give me around 10-15 seconds to get to red, which is my end goal with this pen, is to get into red and, and get red position and try and force enemy weapons off of it. So we can see I didn't really spend much time there, I'm going straight to red now, which I like, I think that is a, a good call. I can assure the safety here and I can get a red armor for me. And also with this red armor, what that means is that I, I can be an extremely strong force at quad with full LG and a red to work with. I'm going to be very dominant at quad if I can get there in time. But I choose to, to serve as an ambush here because I know my team doesn't have any weapons. So I'm trying to catch out any of their weapons who will read this, our weak situation and, and not realize that there could be an ambush waiting in red. It's not the case, however, and I'm going to get position onto, onto the quad and I find lax up in, when I'm doing, doing just that. So now I desperately need armor and I'm probably going to miss out on this quad. Oh, uh, that was a really horrible situation. Picking the wrong moment to shoot the rocket and boring my teammate. So after spawn, I'm going to try and get the packs. The packs aren't there, unfortunately. But So what I will do instead is save the yellow there that I see for my teammate. Because I'm really weak. I can see that my teammate, teammates are nearby. I mean, if you look at the status messages, they're always going on. Look, Multas, Window, Quad, uh, DDK, YA Box. And I would have been calling it on voice as well, yellow up. And Maltas comes and gets it. So now I'm very, I mean, I'm the, the disposable position of a boon sticker, so I'm just going to give a hand in uh, the weapons room. And that's a really important thing to do as a boon sticker because it's a uh, going there, going into the water and stuff with weapons is very risky because you're, you can get discharged. And you're in a position where boon stickers can hit more on you than they normally would be able to, so you're not, you're really, um, you really need boon stickers to do that job because it's the most efficient way to get it done. And so here, I mean, I recognise that there's not much, like, there's not much uh, in the way of red control for the other team. They may have some weapons kicking around here and there, but if we can get reds, we're going to do it. And and Carl is going to get this quad. So now I have a red. My job is not to kill this weapon necessarily, but that's great. But if I get a weapon myself, I'm going to be in a great spot. I decide to go. For 
go for him because uh, basically he he just took the brand new URLs. So I know that there's new, no new URLs soon. Managed to be able to steal the the YA and give information to Encarl with the quad of where Kingpin was, who had the rocket launcher. So Encarl's now killed Kingpin and made sure that we um, are in a position where we can take Red back. And I get the new rocket launcher, so now all the work uh, Encarl's done, if I can kill Laxap here, which I don't, I drop a pack to him instead, but if I could have killed Laxap there, um, Encarl would have basically reset the map for us. And uh, Laxap is super weak, so I'm going to try and flood him. Encarl gets him, again, the communication there. Um, I would have realized, I would have called that in, uh, in red, that situation. And I'm calling this as well, so now it's up to whether any, anyone on my team is able to actually deal with that situation. Um, it, it may or may not be the case. I um, mean, Maltas are going to see if we can pressure this together. We take the opportunity, as we both spawn there, we take the opportunity. Had it just been one or two of us, uh, it was one uh, guy spawning there, we probably would have gone through to the Tully to ring. But as there's two of us spawning there, we, we realize that that's better than one player. And we give it a shot. Off the spawn here again, I'm going to try and help with red as that's the immediate concern. That's what my team's trying to win over at this particular moment in time. We're contesting this area. And uh, as soon as that's over, now I'm just going to go for the weapons. Because I've done all I can do there. And uh, now it's just all about the weapons. So we're winning the boomstick fights, doing as much damage as possible. Trying to get these weapons, get time on them. So I heard the LG being taken, so I should be able to time that for my team. And that was the GL just getting taken, that sound there. Trying desperately to get this RL, but it looks like I'm going to die before it happens. My team's going to get the quad, but we're pretty weak. So I'm going to try and see if I can help uh, sort out red and evaluate the situation. So now we know that there's a shaft at red, and I'm calling that. I know that there's an, an RL or rocket. But we usually say rock instead of RL because we feel it feels nicer to say for us. So we'll you know say rock, rocket YA, enemy rocket YA, and uh, just like re constantly relaying information because this game you need to make you need as much because there's so many things that can kill you in this game you need as much information as possible and I'm in a situation now where I've got a yellow and a rocket launcher and I'm gonna basically go to pen and try and set up early I know my team doesn't have much so I have a few options here either try and fight it from here or go up the lifts and try and jump on it as it spawns but the other team didn't have much to contest it which was awesome and so now I get it so after getting the pen rocket jumping up and getting the quad is a standard thing so now quad pen can be a really hard one to play but I mean usually you just want to treat it as you would a normal pen and I should be spending most uh, I should be spending time at the uh, the weapons room for the first five ten seconds and then ending the quad run on the red side of the map so that I can guarantee myself an armor but I go to red first in this case because maybe because I was suspicious about the lack of presence the enemy team had on the pen. And there we go. And for some reason I knew I knew that there was a weapon around here. This could have been information I got from my team. So I make the quad rocket jump up and I get the and get the red. I'm not really playing as if I have a um a pen or a quad at this point because I want to just make sure that this area is safe first and foremost. I don't want to take risks because if you get out of position in this game, even if you have a, a quad, um, you can get absolutely na nailed. So my first concern is this area and nothing else. I don't care what's going on in the rest of the map. I just need to survive and keep this area safe for my team because that gives red armors to my teammate boomstickers, which gives them a higher percentage kind of chance of getting their weapons and getting out alive with them. I find Milton, and Milton does a huge amount of damage to me. I land some rockets, but it's not really enough to kill him. So after spawn again, I'm going to, going to need to support Quad and try and get as, get as much information about Laxap as possible. I know that he's a boomstick Quad and that he went, he jumped across to get health at SMG. Which is, imp again, important information, and if any one of my team had been at the area of, uh, of SMG or Ring, that's that's information that's deadly deadly important, completely vital information. And again, Kingpin at at yellow, I'm gonna be calling that. And I spawn at Hill. And I see Ganon's there, so uh, and I knew that they have a rock they had a rocket launcher with windows, so I was calling to Ganon saying look there could be someone jumping across and it wasn't the case, we waited for a little bit, it wasn't the case. And then I move up in front 
to try and like distract and divert fire for Ganon. Got nailed by the pine. After spawn, checked red again because I knew Ganon was trying to uh, make an, an attack there. And nothing happens, so I go to the LG. Get the LG. Gonna with the LG, I've got a few options here. Um, so we just have to pick and fin figure out what the best one is. So the quad is spawning. So either I take a, 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 t a play that could be considered as uh, somewhat risky, or I go with the play that is... Um, well, actually, to be thinking about it, all the plays are risky because um, they got the, they just got the quad, basically, with their rocket launcher, which means that I can only hope to kill him if I get an ambush, if I'm able to shoot him without him seeing me or, or so on and so forth. I can't... I can't even come close to winning in a straight up fight because one rocket would insta give me and I need to string a bunch of cells together on him to kill him. So my uh because of that and because of the nature of the shaft, getting some armor with the shaft doesn't really have an uh an immediate impact for my team. So there's two options I really have now. And we've narrowed it down to two things. One is uh to stay in the water wait for the quad to pressure the weapons room and try and discharge him to try and kill him and that would have like an impact a way that I can use my LG to have a, an impact that's immediate enough um, or I can go to hill and try and pin him and hope that my team is occupying him enough that his attention is diverted for long enough that I can get him pinned as he jumped, jumps across to the, to the ring or whatever um, and uh, when I'm talking about having impact on the game, there are situations which you have to recognize where, whereby you forego your team and basically say, fuck it, I'm just going to do whatever, I, you know, I'm just going to try and stack up for a minute. And so if you get, if you take yourself out of the game for a minute, which is what some people do do with the LG, they'll take the LG to hill, uh, sorry, they'll ha sorry, they'll take the LG to pent and try and like, wait there for a pent mega, then they'll swim back and they'll maybe try and go to yellow. Like, that takes a lot of time and if you don't have, if you just have an LG and your team is out of control, it's not going to have much of an impact on the game. So so I try to look for the shot, I can get it, so I'm going to stay around here and I'm going to try and look for the shot again if he's coming coming across on the bridge. I can see him there, he, he can see me as well. So I'm kind of screwed. I've given away my position, but I'm going to try and do damage to Darky. Get really lucky and actually kill Darky there. For some reason, Darky makes a mistake and keeps peeking. And uh, Ganon gets the pack, which is pretty amazing. But now I have no cells to discharge, but I try. Oh, <laughs> um, I can't remember the exact way that the discharge work, discharge, discharges work. But I do know that you do, I think, like half damage to yourself. And I only had four cells to discharge there, and I so I don't know how the math works out because I can't I don't know, I don't know what the damage values are like when you discharge. But usually you insta give yourself, but there for some reason I didn't. So Kingpin's like, oh my god, smiley face. Um, so that was a really good result overall. Ganon got a pack, killed the quad, kept my LG. Good, great result. Get the mega. So now I want to go to uh, the up the lifts and to SMG and see if I can get into red. That's my next. Um, objective because I know that Ganon's in red, so this is like a common thing in Quake World. It's like, is red safe? And Ganon's like, yeah, red's safe, come to red. And so I'll be trying my damnedest to try and get to red, and that in itself can be a challenge sometimes. But we can see here that Ganon's got the uh, red armor. Quad is spawning soon, so instead of going to red, I'm going to basically try and help Ganon out by making sure that he doesn't have to worry about window, which is one less place for him to look, which is really important sometimes. And Ganon's going to get this this quad and I'm going to be able to get into the red now. I will lose all of my cells in the process but there are cells, there is a cell pack at SMG and I'm going to go for that as Ganon's going to go for the red. And now we've we've come back with some controls so that's great and I'm just going to try and get health and I want to get back onto red again. The LG is, is useless really unless you want to kill weapons, unless you have huge amounts of cells. Um, so I try to use as little cells as possible there and Carl helps me and we're getting weapons now and we're getting weapons onto red which is really important so I got this red now you only need 50 health to use up an entire red I get nailed by a pine there and so that sucks but luckily these shaft cells are up for me so that's that's what I was looking for and now I can move on I don't need another red at this point so I'm gonna try and challenge and get weapon kills well, I didn't get weapon kill there, but I got information. I know that there's going to be guaranteed at least one guy at, uh, um, at window now. I, I think he went through anyway. 
So I decided I took that quad over Monthas because I have a shaft and he doesn't. So he's in a better position to hold an area than I am. So he is a, like the, the most important thing about control on this map is holding red. And uh, you do that by standing on ring and peeking in every now and again, now and again, and so on and so forth. You also pick up a lot of spawn frags. And the best way to pick up those spawn frags is with a rocket launcher. And the best way to stop people from getting into red is a rocket launcher. And he is he uh, health and armor, so that's like a much better job for Moltas in that situation, even though he's way more stacked than me. But then I, again, you know, I have a shaft. I have a little bit of armor, but I've got a shaft. So using like a shot, you know, it's four times damage, so 120 damage per cell. And he's to put, you know, if I drop two cells on a guy, he's just gonna die, like, um, unless he's actually pretty stacked and maybe three cells. But like, that's not a lot that you need to hit. So, so my job now is a weapon killer. I got to kill weapons. And there is laxed up. I took a lot of damage. I can I can pretty much go Rambo mode if I want to, but I decide to play it safe and and keep my weapon, which is a fine decision because it's unknown. Like if I take one rocket, I'll die. So this is a a better play for the long term. And I'm gonna get actually gonna have some quad left as I get into this weapons room. And I get some cell packs and I make another run at, at um, Black Step. And I managed to kill him and get his pack. So that, that quad run went amazingly well for me. Amazingly well. So it was a good, great decision to go for that red. And not, not to press on but be patient. Messed up the rocket jump to pen. I wanted to get to pen. Um, but now I have to just settle for ring and to survive. I just have to survive. Survival, survival. That's all I'm thinking about right now. Get the red and survive, 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 survive. I don't care about anything else not right now. And there's nothing my team can say to me that will stop me from my survival mode right now. Uh, now I have enough health, then I'm okay. And I've kept my weapons and stuff, and Ganon's got this side of the map cleaned. So I'm going to be looking to pressure the other side of the map now. First, firstly, I'm making sure that we got guys on, on this uh, red. So we've got Moltas there. Moltas is on red. He can basically relieve me of any red duties. Now I can attack yellow. And with Ganon, we're making an attack on this yellow, trying to keep this away from the enemy team. I realized that there's nothing more to be done there, so I'm going to basically go back to ring for some reason. I don't know why I did that. Um, could have been a call from a teammate. I'm not sure what it was, but I went back to this area of the map, which is okay. Managed to catch an enemy. I think I had information I had information from a team boom sticker he's who would have called that because um I don't think I ever I sit and what the, yeah I'll never sit and wait there unless I've got information to suggest that someone an enemy will be there so we've lost position on reds from boom stickers so I'm going to try and kill Milton but unluckily I can't kill him before he grabs the red which is really unfortunate that changes everything had I killed him I could easily get the red but now look I'm nearly dead and they've got two boom stickers on position with the red armor they will die but Again, this is uh, this is time which I could have had fragging and stuff like that. And look, I nearly die again. They got a shaft into SNG. I'm going to be telling the quad that. I'm just going to sit on position at red because this is the safest place for me to be. If I move somewhere, one boomstick shot, full boomstick shot, and I die, and then I'd, I'd lose my rocket and my shaft, which is a great. They're huge commodities. And with the red armor, they're just they're just you know really scary. So survival is key. Right now, I'm just going to stay here. Reduce the surface area from how I can get hit. Get my health, get some cells, and after I get the health, I'm gonna be looking to position myself um, on the other side of the map again. To try and pressure the weapons, and there we go, rocket jump for the quad. Good, good decision not to chance anything crazy. Making sure that red is uh, safe, as we lost it in my absence, uh, a brief absence. Gonna try and track this guy down, I don't know what he has. I won't get the kill, but he does die to a teammate um, regardless. Managed to get Laxap there. Luckily, Laxap wasn't on position, so I was able to just kill him. And uh, I get this red. So now I need to make. Sh I need to stay here. Make sure red is safe. Okay, and Carl's got it covered. So I'm gonna stay. Well, and now I'm kind of weak because of what just ha ha happened. And look how much damage you can take from boom stickers. Like, you can actually take a lot of damage from them. In certain situations, it's it can it's always about it's all about how fast you kill them, and whether or not they have any angles on you. So I get the reds, uh, and Carl gave it to me, 
and went back in common back to SMG because I had the LG. That's the reason he gave it to me because I'm going to be the guy taking quad. I'm reluctant to go to the bridge, low bridge to water area because I don't have information about. I don't have information about whether they could have a potential discharger there. And if I got discharged, it would be disastrous. And for the same logic, I wanted a rocket jump up and be, instead of losing time and running all the way back up. But I nail myself. Turned out quite well because Milton got into red under undetected. Um, I have. I'm pretty certain there's no no way I knew that. And luckily, I managed to kill him. So that was that was a stroke of luck. And at this point, it seems like yeah, we've got guys. Do we have anyone on reds? We pretty much. I think we have someone on reds. Yeah. Yeah, we do. We have Encarl on red with the rocket launcher, so I'm f I'm free to be on this side of the map then. Is that what, is what that means? So we've got me just defending quad here by myself because my teammates are weak at red, which is fine. I hear the water, so I try and jump and make the shot. I actually miss miss the uh, kind of pre-rehearsed shot up to the little water opening there. Gonna try and kill these weapons. I managed to get the kill, and that's always what you want to be doing with the quads: killing weapons where possible. You've got you've always got to weigh up like the 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 chance of you surviving. So you're gonna manage to kill the new RL, new, new RL dead, new rock dead. I decide as there's a 10 seconds left, I'll just drop in the water there. And I know that there's no one able to kill me. So yeah, that's that's the game. Uh, not much pausing towards the end because of, of all the survival. But um. Right, yeah, so you can see how the decision making is very structured in this game. And it's something that's really achievable. You can really structure it. Like, it's very dynamic what you have to do. The, the situation is constantly changing, but you need to rely on information, constant information from your teammates. I didn't, I didn't actually talk about the binds that much. And uh, if it were a mix, it'd be a bit different. But TKS, we, we do use binds quite a bit, like reading statuses and stuff. But we do have really good voice communication as well. So we're going to be relaying the most important information on voice. So s stuff like where the enemy are, uh, rockets are, when the rockets are spawning, when the shaft is spawning, you know, um, if they're on red, if red is open, you know, the, the status of red. And so there's so many things we're going to be calling because we know as players that all of the, these bits of information can help uh, either ourselves or other players make decisions. And I hope you glean some insight from that of how um, how I play how I play Quake World Forum for at least, and that's everything going through through my head when I'm playing, all the decisions that I'm making. Um, and yeah, so there you go. There's a little bit of, more of an in-depth look at exactly what goes on uh, in the, the decision-making process. Hopefully, that wasn't too boring for um, for you guys. But yeah, GG. If you liked it, uh, ask me to do more and I would love to oblige.